Welcome to the Soul of Islam radio podcast with Ahmed Safamini and Ihsan Alexander. The time for the Islamic Renaissance is now. May the peace, the mercy, the blessings, and the light of Allah be upon us all. My name is Ahmed and I am a physicist, a poet, and deeply committed to the reawakening of the human mind and heart through art, science, and spirituality. Ihsan is a spiritual coach committed to spiritual awakening within the Muslim community and beyond. He is the creator of several leading-edge coaching and online training programs designed to cultivate greater awareness, spirituality, and success. You can learn more at his website, ihsanalexander.com. And you are listening to the Soul of Islam radio podcast. It is a program dedicated to sharing the deeper dimension of Islam and supporting your personal growth and spiritual development. Again, I am Ahmed, and I'm excited, delighted, happy, and thankful to be here with my good friend and dear brother, Ihsan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome to the Soul of Islam Radio. This is Ihsan with my dear friend and brother Ahmed, bidding you all a warm welcome from wherever you are in the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's light and blessings, grace, guidance, and protection be with you all. This will be an extremely important episode, and we're happy that you're here to join us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and guide you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah. Now, today's podcast uh, will focus on a very important matter of the heart. You know, we often find ourselves and others in emotional turmoil and instability. The methods for treatment are sought in wrong places, and the real causes are usually never addressed directly. Now, the real possibility of introducing emotional stability in one's life is the inspiration behind this very episode. We will take the opportunity to reflect on the importance and reality of the heart, the connections between spiritual states and emotions, and the answer to the question we propose, what is emotional freedom? The topic of emotional freedom is an essential. It's a very valuable, very important topic, especially for us as Muslims who are striving for personal excellence in our daily lives. And more so than just in our daily lives, but in our perpetual states of being. It's important to remember that the goal of Islam is freedom. And it's about freedom from everything other than God. Freedom from everything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We as Muslims, as believers, as followers of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and of all Prophets of Allah, from Adam السلام, through Noah, Abraham, Moses, and Jesus to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, the last and final messenger, live a life that is based in service and servanthood to Allah Almighty, the One, the Creator, the Lord, the God. We serve none other than Allah Almighty. And this is the meaning of La ilaha illallah the first and foremost commandment from the beginning of time, that thou shalt have no gods before me. Allah is speaking, that you shall worship no idols, no false gods before me, but that you shall worship purely and sincerely Allah Almighty alone. The ultimate false god, the ultimate idol, is the self. It is the ego, the human ego, the mind body. True freedom is freedom from the self. And in this episode, we will discuss how emotions relate to this topic. We'll cover, we'll discuss what emotions actually are, where and how they arise, how they become triggered, how they are largely unconscious and auto- automatic based on environmental programming. And also we'll discuss how to progressively transcend turbulent emotional states to attain freedom. We'll discuss the goal of Islam, what it means to be free of creation and truly in service to the Creator. We'll discuss the nature of the nafs, the self, and how tazgiyat the nafs, the purification of the self, is essential to a true, whole, complete, and balanced experience of religion. This is a very important topic in discussion, and we sincerely hope and pray that it will give you great value and improve the quality of your practical life as well as your eternal divine destiny in Akhirah, in Allah Almighty's divine presence. 
the essence of who we truly are resides inside of the heart. Period. That's it. The purpose of our entire existence is to journey within, to unravel the beauty of the one who set us all in motion, to remove the veils that stand between us and gnosis. The mercy, the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, cannot be quantified. Its magnitude, its extent, its reality are beyond the imagination and the understanding of the human mind. It is through His mercy that we, human beings, have been given the tools, the necessary tools for this spiritual journey. Without His mercy, we would be spending lifetimes chasing nothingness. So Alhamdulillah wa shukrulillah for the way, for the way of Islam. Alhamdulillah for knowing of Islam and for the opportunity to know Him. The heart contains the secrets of man, the secrets of universe, and the breath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From within the heart, true knowledge is derived, true love is experienced and expressed, and the truth in its entirety is witnessed. Who are we but nothingness, given the chance to know everything? And because of this, we must treat every passing moment with seriousness, contemplation, reflection, and care. Every moment is a step taken, and every step taken can either bring us closer to the path or deviate us away from it. To cultivate awareness of every passing moment, we must be aware of the heart within. SubhanAllah, the heart is a constant reminder, beating the essence of the journey and purpose of our existence. So the condition and the state of the heart takes priority over everything in life. Everything. You know, we pay so much attention to the mind. We live our lives on the fast lanes of intellectual pursuit. We spend our energy feeding the self from the world, and we give little or nothing to the heart. We, in essence, neglect the heart in comparison to what we do for the mind. Now, physically and spiritually speaking, without the heart, the body dies. The mind's ability to function is totally dependent on the heart. And even with knowing of this very fact, we still push away the obvious. SubhanAllah, the human being is indeed ignorant, as Allah says in the Qur'an. However, an awakening to the truth is not only a reality but a possibility for everyone for without this we wouldn't be here and now and it is here and now that we need to begin caring paying more attention and taking care of our own hearts the heart is the throne of the kingdom of our beings the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon which he was is and will always will be a lifetime is an opportunity to orient the heart along any direction the choice is up to us and the control is in the hands of Allah. We must be aware of our choices and be aware of what goes in through the doors of the heart. Now we are told of the two doors, the doors of passions and desires, shubuhat and shahuat. The doors are open but can be open towards one of two things, the illusions of the world or the realities of Allah. It's that simple. And because of these doorways, the orientation of the heart the Qibla, in which it is pointing to, what goes in through those doors will settle in until the very heart begins to reflect the nature of whatever it is that it is housing. It is just like how the condition, cleanliness, and state of a house reflects the tenants that occupy it. So if we are not cautious of what goes in, we slip into states of unawareness until the heart begins to suffer from whatever it is that is lingering within it. One of the ways we can tune in is to look for symptoms. And those symptoms manifest in all sorts of emotions. And this is where the heart of this episode comes in. The idea of an emotional freedom. Since the heart houses whatever we put into it, we can experience anything from rage, anger, fear, sadness, joy, disgust, trust, anxiety, shame, envy, or pity. Emotions are not always a bad thing, and the idea is not to be free of emotions either, but 
In a way, emotional freedom is simply means to be in control of one's emotions, to be in control of what passes through the doors of our hearts. For the other way around, we would fall into emotional enslavement, where we become slaves to the passions and desires of the world. Emotional freedom is to have awareness, is to be grounded and stable with every passing moment. When the world occupies the heart, we are then controlled by worldly emotions and the whims of the self. But when the heart is free from the world, we then become closer to Allah and emotions begin to serve us in every situation we find ourselves in. Emotional freedom, simply freedom from the world and nearness to Allah. So what exactly are emotions? We're so used to this term and to the experience of emotions that we may take for granted what emotions actually are and how they affect us. Perhaps one way to define emotions is to say that they are the biochemical experience of the physiological reaction to our thoughts. Let me repeat that. We can say that emotions, for the purpose of this discussion, and to be accurate, are the biochemical experiences of the physiological reaction of our body to our thoughts. They are literally the physical manifestation or energetic experience of the quality of our thoughts, our specific thoughts, unconscious or subconscious thoughts. For example, if something happens that your mind interprets as deserving of anger, as something that is bad, that it qualifies or quantifies as bad, then you become angry. If something happens that the mind has been conditioned to interpret as good, we get happy, we become happy. Though even this experience of happiness is fleeting, it's very temporary, and we cannot hold on to it. For example, if you were to win a contest or attain a goal, you become happy. A new home, a new car, whatever it may be. It, it causes happiness and joy, excitement in the being, in the system. It's a, physio- it's a physiological or biochemical experience. Literally, chemicals are flowing through the bloodstream, triggered by the mind, triggered by the experience that makes us feel happy. But because of the nature of such an experience, it can't be, it can't be held, it can't be contained. And so no goal is ever enough. Any goal attained ultimately leaves a vacuum in experience afterwards. Enhance the insatiable hunger and thirst for dunya. When we base our goals and our lives upon attainment of more, we will never be satisfied because it will never be enough. Yet the important point here for us, for the Muslim, for the believer, for the spiritual seeker seeking truth, awareness, awakening, enlightenment, the presence of Allah, For the human being seeking freedom, we must remember, we must know that external circumstances cannot define who we are nor how we must feel. To be limited to such a state and to be limited to dependence upon dunya in such a way, the outer world of form, appearance, illusion, and ultimately the world of test and trial is to be dependent upon something other than Allah. It's a form of codependence. And Islam is about independence. It's about developing dependence upon nothing other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who transcends space and time, who transcends dunya. To be dependent upon external circumstances to tell us how we should feel and who we are is a failure to realize yet the truth of the fact that there is nothing other than God, that there is no God but God. La ilaha illallah. Dependence upon external circumstances and conditions, dependence upon dunya, results in the victim mindset. This is a state of disempowerment, which leads always to suffering, to unhappiness, to despondency, depression, and negativity. The Muslim, the believer, the one who truly believes in Allah, is independent of dunya, and so free, and not a victim. Because their Lord is Allah, the Lord of mercy, the Lord of compassion, the Lord of strength, and light, grace, goodness, and success. Now, 
Note that when we speak about emotions, that emotions are based on interpretations of events. They're based on ascribing meaning to events, experiences, and thus they're based on programming, how we've learned to interpret events and circumstances in the world to mean certain things. The true servant of Allah is independent of the rise and fall of the turbulent tide of emotions. And there's a beautiful story of one of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ that can help illustrate what this is about, what this means. Once the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, his close companions, were sitting with the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, and every time a certain man would walk by, the Prophet ﷺ would remark that that is one of the inhabitants of paradise. Allah has given that man glad tidings of Jannah. In dunya, he's already been given glad tidings of paradise. This was a very high rank, a very high station for a companion, for a human being to have been told before even the day of judgment, he has already entered into paradise. So the companions were always curious, what was it about this man? And one of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ decided to seek deeper into the secret of this man. And he went and knocked on the man's door and asked to be his guest. And the man, of course, welcomed him. And this companion of the Prophet ﷺ sat and slept in the same home with this man for several nights. And he was observing, what is this man doing differently that we are not doing, that the Prophet ﷺ has given him, has said he has been given glad tidings of paradise. And he's looking and he's not seeing anything that he can see as extraordinary. So after three days or so, the man asks, you know, you're welcome, you're my guest, I'm happy to host you, but is there something I can do for you? And then the beloved companion of the Prophet ﷺ said to him that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said, you are one of the inheritors of paradise, one of the inhabitants of paradise. You've been given glad tidings of Jannah. And I'm looking and I can't figure out what your secret is, what you're doing differently that we're not doing. You're not praying any more than us. You don't stand in prayer during the night. You're not awake more than us. You're not fasting more than the rest of us. What is your secret? And the man then says, there are three things that I do every single day, that I remind myself every day before bed. I forgive everyone and anyone of anything they may have wronged me. Anyone who has been unjust or wronged me, I forgive them, and I ask Allah to forgive them. Number two, I say to myself that if tomorrow morning the host, the world, comes together and gives me the wealth of the world, makes me their king, it will not change my state. It will not change my state. And number three, if by evening they were to come to me and take it all away, and reduce me to poverty so that I have nothing, it will not change my state. At this point, the companion of the Prophet ﷺ understood. This was a true servant of Allah, completely independent of dunya, totally free of external circumstances and conditions. The world could not define him. He had returned to his fitra, to his true self, his true identity as a servant of nothing other than Allah. In the day of promises, when Allah created the souls and said, Am I not your Lord? All the souls affirmed, Bale, you are our Lord, Ya Rabbi, Ya Allah. Truly you are our Lord. And then we came to dunya and forgot that fact. And we made false idols, false gods for ourselves of dunya. This man in particular had returned to that state of perfection, independence, dependence on nothing other than Allah. His emotional state was not dictated by what happened outside of him. And this is the goal of Islam. This is the goal of Sufism, of Tasawwuf, of the purification of self, to become so purified of the self that you transcend your very self and so become free of the self. This is what it means to be Abdullah, a servant of Allah, a true servant of Allah, to become totally, entirely, ultimately free of everything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The spiritual path of development within Islam is about cultivating greater awareness, greater independence from dunya, from the self, from all influences other than Allah Almighty. And this is the path that leads to the true realization, true self-realization, and to marifa, knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and experience of the Divine Presence. MashaAllah, Brother Hassan, that's beautiful what you said. You know, what does it really mean to be free 
to attain true freedom, to be free of the world, to have nothing but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inside of our hearts. And I feel inspired to tune into the physical world to perhaps get a deeper understanding or maybe even shed light on the connection between the heart and, and the emotions that we feel. So let us imagine a, a container, a box. A container or a box is ultimately a physical object. And any physical object near or on the surface of a much larger object like our planet, Earth, will always experience a gravitational pull. And because it is a box, we can place other objects into it. If we were to fill up this box and we wanted to exert a force on this box to move it from one point to another, this box would then feel a stronger gravitational pull and it would become much harder to uh, push or move this box from point A to point B. You know, physically speaking, if I had a very large box filled up to the top, I would have to exert a force. Maybe after some time, I would start to feel exhausted. I would have to take breaks to catch my breath, feed myself to maybe get more energy and continue. And in the same way, this container, this box is just like the human heart, the spiritual heart. The heart has to be free of everything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the same way that a container, a box, would experience a gravitational pull, the human heart, if it is full of the world, will also feel a spiritual gravitational world towards the world, towards the dunya. And the goal and the purpose of our lives here is to move from one point to another, from point A to point B, from our birth towards our death. In between those points, we are moving. We do not control time. We are moving along the dimension of time without any interference from our end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in complete control. And as we move, we have to be aware of what we put inside of our hearts. Now, in the same way that we can place objects into a container, if we were to place the world inside of our hearts, it would start to trigger certain emotions. We would begin to feel the weight of the world. And the way that we can tell is by looking for symptoms. Those symptoms do manifest in, in anger or, or jealousy or, or fear or sadness and so forth. I guess what I'm tr really trying to say is that if I want to feel something, if I want to feel something towards someone, if let's say, for example, I wanted to be angry towards someone, the only way that I can actually feel this, have this emotion, is to contain it inside of my heart. I can't be angry towards someone without having anger inside my own heart. It's interesting is that when the world enters, settles in, and occupies the heart, it places us in, or maybe takes us to an unstable state. We become very unstable, and due to this instability, we begin to feel all sorts of emotions. In the secular world, this is treated via drugs, right? You know, when we're feeling all sorts of emotions from, you know, anger to, to sadness, if left untreated, spiritually, we end up falling into much worse states such as depression and anxiety. You know, the, the goal, the purpose is to really transcend the, the gravity of, of this world. You know, if, Physically, we can understand what that really means, but once we have that understanding you know, through physics, we can get a much deeper understanding to what it really means spiritually. Gravity wants to pull things towards it, but Allah is saying, transcend that, because only through transcendence that you can actually reach me, that you can actually truly experience reality altogether. You know, Ahmed, much of life is circular. We, we are born in a state of purity. The Prophet of Allah said that all human beings are born in fitra. And we lose that. Our heart becomes filled with everything other than that pure light of Allah. But ultimately our return path to Allah is to return to that state of fitra. Right? So the Prophet said that all human beings are born in fitra. In this state 
which is basically a blank slate. And he said that it is through environmental programming that we learn to process information and lose that state of innocence, that state of perfection and clarity. It is through our environment that we develop a sense of self where this identity gets reinforced and where we begin to identify with a conceptual sense of self, the ego, also referred to as the self or in Arabic, the nafs, a nafs. We then learn to interpret or how to interpret events based on that ego-based identity, which really is nothing but a mental construct. It's primarily psychological. Remember that we are born in Islam, in a state of Islam, we are born Muslim, which means that we are born in harmony and at peace with all that is. It is a result of the environment that we find ourselves in, that we're born into in this world, in dunya, and the reinforcement of an ego-based identity, separation results. And when we are separated psychologically, conceptually, spiritually from all else, the outer world then is seen as a threat. And this is a fundamentally flawed paradigm, where we begin to believe that we live in a hostile universe. We begin to operate from a state of being at war with what is. And this is the opposite of the goal of Islam. It's a state that is literally out of Islam, out of harmony, out of peace, out of serenity, surrender, submission. The goal of Islam is to return to that state of harmony, peace, serenity, submission, and oneness with all that is. This is maqam al-wilaya. Awliyaullah have attained that rank, that station where they are so surrendered that they are at harmony with what is. They are friendly with what is. Literally, they are known as the friends of God. It means they are friends with the divine will of Allah. There is no resistance in their beings. They are in a state of surrender. Unfortunately, the normal human condition is out of that state of surrender. It's out of the state of Islam. It's a state of resistance. It's a state of rebellion. And because we're surrounded by egos throughout our lives, as children, as infants, we develop this egocentric worldview, this paradigm, and these models and pathways of thought. Everything becomes about me. Everything is about the story and the drama of me. It's all nafsi, nafsi. This creates enormous suffering in the world, in our personal lives, and in our collective experience. And it's totally unnecessary. It must be transcended. And again, this is the goal of Islam. It is only beyond the self that we can discover and reach to Allah Almighty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must be the center of our lives, not ourselves. Emotions serve a purpose. They're a valuable tool. They're meant to be a valuable guidance system. But when we are unconsciously driven by our emotions, when we unconsciously identify with them, we are essentially asleep unconscious and we are not free we become thus a slave or slaves to the physiological vehicle of the soul the mind and the body and in that state the soul the heart are not in control the mind and the body are we must essentially unlearn what we have learned we must undo the ego and return to purity to clarity to that blank slate to that fitra and only then is choice actually possible. Only then can free will actually be exercised. Otherwise, we are fundamentally, we're essentially the unconscious reaction of programming to our environment. If I were to say, I am angry, I am clearly identifying with anger. I'm defining myself as the emotional experience of anger. You look at this at a deeper level, and it's anger is not in, to be angry, to say, I am angry, is in reality not an adjective. We're not describing our state, but we are describing ourselves as anger. We're identifying with an emotion. And this then is the loss of self. It's the loss of consciousness. It is essentially unconsciousness. It's becoming lost in the dream, in the matrix, and not awake. So the question is, are we, are you, a servant to Allah or a servant to yourself? This is the ultimate question, this is the ultimate test, and this is the purpose of life, to transcend the self and to truly become a servant of none other than Allah Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to truly become Abdullah 
is only possible beyond the self. As human beings, as Ahmed said, emotions are a natural part of our experience. But the question is, are we driven by our emotions? Are we driven by these unconscious patterns and modes of thinking, of behavior, of interpretation? Or can we transcend them? Can we truly become independent? Can we truly transcend ourselves and truly become free? Tazgiyat the nafs, the purification of the self, is about this. It's about purifying ourselves of our very selves. It's about returning to purity, innocence, clarity, to fitra, and thus discovering truth and reality beyond the veil of interpretation, beyond the filter of the ego. The goal of Islam is to again learn to see clearly, to see truly, to live life unfiltered. And so said the Prophet ﷺ, beware the vision of the believer, for they see with the light of Allah, true vision, clarity, and they have true sight, true perception. That is our goal. The Qur'an is full of reminders, and we are reminded in the Qur'an that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the ins and the jinn, man and the unseen beings, for the sake of worshipping. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala programmed us to worship. He created us to worship. And it's interesting in that in that ayah, He says worship and He stops. He doesn't say that I created man and jinn to worship me. He just says worship. SubhanAllah, we came into this world, like Brother Hassan said, on a state of fitra, on a state of purity. Really in the essence of that, it means that we came into the world facing Allah. Allah was our qibla. Sure, we weren't we weren't aware of it. We didn't have the awareness. We just were. You know, when you look at babies, you look at little children, they just are, just like everything else. And through life, we, we, we develop this self-awareness and we begin to identify with something called the self. And then we begin to slip into states of forgetfulness and states of unawareness. But going back to that ayah we came into this world to worship by shifting away by changing our qibla and orienting our hearts towards the world we go from worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to really worshiping ourselves everybody is in a state of worship even atheists who say that they don't believe in a God, but everybody is in a state of worship. And in a time like this, in a world like this, a secular world, the apex of worship became worship of the self. The collective consciousness, all of humanity, has driven itself to a state where all of humanity now is worshiping itself, feeding itself. Everybody now is some kind of God with a number of followers via social networks, Facebook to Twitter. And so by reminding ourselves that we came into this world for the sake of worship, we have to ask ourselves, what is worship? What is it but total surrender and obedience? We either surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obey everything that He puts in front of us, or we surrender to ourselves (laughs) and obey ourselves, the whims of the self. Emotional freedom is freedom from the world. Emotional freedom can be experienced, can be attained via awareness. It's interesting how many times awareness comes up in these episodes. Awareness is so important. Awareness gives us the window, it gives us the vision, it gives us the basira to actually see, to to treat every passing moment with seriousness. Awareness gives us a window into the realm of the unseen. It brings us closer to the truth, the truth from which true knowledge is derived from. And through awareness, we can begin to identify 
the aspects of ourselves, the faults, the traps that we put ourselves into to find whatever it is that brings up these emotions within us. You know, ultimately, these emotions, the, the states of instability that we go into are only a consequence of the world inside of our hearts. It's really tricky. That's why we feel all sorts of emotions. Once the world enters in, settles in, and occupies the heart, as it moves around, as it shifts around inside, we oscillate back and forth between anger, sadness, jealousy, envy, and whatnot. Emotional freedom is freedom from the mind. Isa alayhi salam was free of the mind. He was free of self. He was free of ego. No emotions controlled his actions, his behavior. He had the awareness. And because he was truly free, and his heart was free of the world, that he was able to transcend the gravity of the world, both physically and spiritually. Which is why we know that Isa salam was able to walk on water. You know, the miracles of these beloved prophets are not just for us to, to be in states of wonderment and awe. They're actually trying to teach us something. To show us the possibility, the potential that exists inside of us. How many of us find ourselves in, or we're even taught by our parents or the community that these are prophets, you're different. No, we're all made of the same matter physically. We're all made of the same self. And we're all made of the same breath. SubhanAllah, we're all the same. And because we're all the same, we all have the same potential. It's just that prophets were chosen to be prime examples for us. Prime examples. And the prime example is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is the true definition of Muslim. He is the Sufi. He is the one who was able to transcend both space and time. He was truly free of self. No emotions controlled him. Allah was the only one, the only thing that filled his heart. He didn't feel an attachment to the world. Rather, he felt an attachment to Allah. Through these attachments with Allah, one could feel love, real love, could experience love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instilled the power of reflection inside of the heart as well. Tafakkur has been given to every human being. And we take it lightly. If we can just sit alone 15 minutes and reflect, reflect on the meanings, on the, on the way that every prophet had lived his life, on their miracles, on just one ayah, I promise you, not because I promise you, because because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you just reflect, Allah will open doors, doors into worlds that you can't even imagine. Emotional freedom is beyond the freedom that we chase in this world, physically speaking. You know, we go to the West to experience freedom. Emotional freedom is beyond that, is beyond democracy, is beyond things that we are familiar with from day to day. Emotional freedom is embedded in the goal of our existence, of the purpose of our existence. And in a way, emotional freedom is just a new lens through which we can look through to truly understand what it is we are sent here to do. So what are some specific suggestions on transcending emotion, on attaining emotional freedom and really freedom from the self? It's about awareness. It's about awareness, being aware of the self. And to do this, we must learn to develop what is known as presence, which is only possible through stillness, inner stillness. 
Thus we attain prescience and clarity. We must learn to become still and quiet, anchored and rooted in the Divine Presence. When we're still, we can learn to dissociate from the emotional experience. We can learn to look at the emotional experience and identify it, and so transcend it. Now, emotions in this way, at this level, at this caliber, are really unique to humanity. Right? Animals and angels do not experience them as such. And in the Quran, Holy Quran al Karim, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses or describes how he taught Adam salam, the names to identify the manifestation of experience within the physical world and that the angels had no knowledge of this. One of the deeper meanings is that Allah was teaching Adam salam, about the deeper aspects of himself, of even his emotional experiences. Sages and mystics throughout time have understood that the physical world is in many ways a reflection of the human being, of the human self. That the human being is the microcosm of the macrocosm. And that the very physical world, animals, plants, everything, are really an, a manifestation or reflection of the inner reality of the human soul. The characteristics of animals, for example, and beings and other creatures, are expressions or manifestations of human qualities. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one meaning of this verse, or these verses in the Quran, in which he taught Adam alayhi salam the names of experiences of such things, is that he was showing the angels, Allah Almighty was showing the angels, that human beings have access to a range of experience that even angels do not have access to, that they cannot possibly comprehend, that is only possible through the human self, the human ego, the human nafs. And the angels then knew that humanity had a potential that they could not grasp. And they understood then the potential and the possibility to transcend the self, to transcend the ego, and so attain a rank even greater than they, greater than the angels. To transcend emotion, to transcend the self, and to become free, to truly become free, and to become independent, dependent internally, Number one, we must develop, you must develop the ability to become still, to become quiet, and to know what it is like to be in a state of presence. We recommend always at least 15 minutes per day minimum of meditation or muraqabah, a presence practice, dhikr, in which the mind is surrendered still, in which your whole being is surrendered and stilled. For more detailed instructions on that, you can always visit islamicmeditation.com. But simply, being present with your breath and relaxing, you can learn to still and quiet the mind. And at least 15 minutes per day in this dhikr, in this muraqaba, is essential. Number two, get in the habit of asking yourself, how do I feel? You have an emotional guidance system that will let you know if your thoughts are out of alignment with the truth. Identify the emotions. Name them. You can see, you can say to yourself, I am feeling, my being is experiencing anger. My being is experiencing joy. I am experiencing fear. I am experiencing frustration. In identifying the emotions, you dissociate from them. You separate from them. Try not to say, I am angry, but rather, I am experiencing anger. I am experiencing fear. And in this way, you create some space between you and the emotion. And then in that moment, practice your practice. In the daily practice of meditation and muraqab and dhikr, you learn how to become still. Now it's time to apply that practice, to practice that practice. So calm and center yourself. Breathe. Relax. Surrender, calm your being, and you'll attain transcendence. Number four, affirm the truth. Remember that there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illallah. And nothing in dunya is your Lord. All truth flows from this. La ilaha illallah. And then simply breathe, process, release, and let go. 
Give yourself some time and you will get clear. You will get pure. This is purification. Purification of the self from the self. MashaAllah, in Islam we have been given incredibly valuable spiritual practices and spiritual guidance that leads us to the highest states of experience, to the highest states of development, and ultimately enlightenment and awakening. Islam is not just a formal ritual-based religion or a set of beliefs. It is meant to cultivate a reality and a state of being within us that is fundamentally transformative. Islam is ultimately about attaining the state of Islam. And that is what it means to be a Muslim. Here at Soul of Islam Radio, it is and will always be our goal to support you in your personal development and spiritual growth towards excellence and towards a truly happy and successful life. And this is only possible through true spiritual development. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and us and always keep us upon the straight path and always lead us forward in our development towards His Divine Presence. Now, regarding Soul of Islam Radio, we'd like to kind of put out a special message. Soul of Islam Radio began as a labor of love, and it continues as a labor of love. However, the world is such that unless there is some sort of exchange of energy, we end up with somewhat of an imbalanced equation, and ultimately we begin to falter. We need you. We need your support. And we need your love. If you value Soul of Islam Radio and if you benefit from Soul of Islam Radio, then we humbly ask you to go to soulofislamradio.com and make a donation. Support this program. Support this project. Support the awakening of our ummah and the evolution of our community. We cannot do this without you. And this is the Sunnah Allah, the Sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to set things up in such a way that there is this mutual support, this mutual love in anything in the world. Had Allah Almighty wanted, He would have given the Prophet ﷺ all the resources he needed to become victorious and successful in the propagation of Islam, the truth. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to give the believers the opportunity to support the cause, to support Islam, and in so doing to become true believers. This is the real test of faith and belief, of quality of intention of our beings. If we are accustomed to giving to dunya and supporting dunya-based projects and businesses and needs, we must never hesitate to give for Islam. And Allah and His Messenger وسلم, said clearly that wealth does not decrease by giving. So anything you can give will help will help us continue with this project. It will help us to develop this project and continue to take it to the next level. $5, $10, $20, $50 or more. Whatever you can give will be recompensed by Allah Almighty and He has promised and will enable us to truly take Soul of Islam Radio forward. If you are a consistent listener of Soul of Islam Radio, you know that we have never before asked for your support. And now we are nearing the end of season three. But now for us to continue and to take this program even further, to make it even better, to provide even greater value, we need your help and support. And so we humbly ask, whoever you are, wherever you are, show us your support. Give us your support. Show us your love and show us that you believe in this work and in this message. Help us to support your community. We're in this together. Together, we can change things. We can change everything. We can rebuild our ummah upon the light and excellence and beauty it was meant to be based on. We can again attract the divine blessings and support of Allah Almighty. And it's time for us as a community, as an ummah, to support the awakening of our community and the revitalization and rebirth of our deen, our religion, our way. Holy and blessed Islam the divinely revealed prophetic path. This is your chance to help us and to support us in making a difference. So please visit soulofislamradio.com and give us your support. May Allah Almighty bless you, support and protect you and your loved ones, and increase us all in understanding, wisdom, light, and love. May He subhanahu wa ta'ala lead us to a new reality, a new world, 
a new possibility where Islam is again seen and lived as the noble, blessed, and beautiful way of living it truly is. Jazakallah khairun. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Like Brother Hassan said, this is a labor of love. We love doing this. We're happy that we're doing this. Uh, to us, this is a beautiful opportunity. And to be able to connect and share and reflect the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what more do we want? So we thank you again for your love, your, for your support, for continuing to uh, listen to the Soul of Islam radio and recommending it to your, to your family and friends and for spreading the word over the internet. Please continue to do so. And inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, will create openings into bigger opportunities, inshallah. This brings us to the end of this episode. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His blessings, for His inspiration, and for this beautiful opportunity. Thank you for tuning in. Please make sure to like us on Facebook and subscribe to this podcast on iTunes. So visit soulofislamradio.com and give us your support, inshallah. And with that, may the peace, the mercy, the blessings, and the light of Allah be upon us all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.